I called the course Personality and Its Transformations, and I think you could think about that as a restatement of the idea of being and becoming. And that's what you are. You're, for whatever that means, you're an entity that both is and is transforming. And there, there's a rule that goes along with that, which is don't sacrifice who you could be for who you are. Which means if you have to choose to transform in a positive direction or maintain your current position, then it's better to transform in a positive direction. Who are you? You're the thing that transforms who you are. But on top of that, you're the thing that transforms who you are. You are the thing that is and you're the thing that becomes. And you should put the thing that becomes at a higher place than the thing that is. That means you also have to allow yourself to shake off those things about you that you might be pathologically attached to habits and people, for that matter, ways of thinking, all of those things, you have to allow yourself to shake those off, and that's more like a burning. And you might say, well, I don't know what I should leave behind, and the answer to that is, that's a lie. You know some of the things that you should leave behind. You, all you have to do is ask yourself, you'll come up with a list instantly of a hundred stupid things that you're doing that you know you could stop doing. Some of them maybe you don't know you could stop doing. It's like, well, fine, leave those alone for now. But there's a bunch of things you perfectly know well that you could stop doing that would improve your life. Everything that makes you anxious or everything that makes you upset is the same as every other thing that's ever made you upset. All those things that have made you upset that you've never dealt with, they're all laying down there at the bottom of your nasty little soul waiting to pop themselves up in some, in some random utterance, right? And so then you go in there at your peril because if you're the person who pokes around in that, then you're going to get blasted with all of that stuff. It's going to come out like almost uncontrollably. And then, then you can sort it out. What's behind the game you're playing? And the answer to that is all the world that you're ignoring. Always. You're trying to do well in a class and you get a bad grade. Why did I get this C minus? What is it? The answer is you don't know. Do you not know what you thought you knew? Are you not who you think you are? Do you not work hard enough? Are your values not organized properly? Do you misuse your time? Are you in the wrong field? Have, have, is the way you're construing your life completely inappropriate? Are you acting out what your parents wanted you to do and you're pissed off about it so you're only running at 40% to spite them despite the fact that they're paying $25,000 a year for your education? When, you, when you're in the world and something objects to you, something that matters objects to you, then in the entire unrealized world is in that thing that objects. It's all tangled up inside it. That's why it's the great dragon of chaos. It's everything that's outside of your conceptual structure. And what is that? It's everything that lurks outside of your, of your walled city. Well, you get your C minus and you don't do anything about it. Maybe you're a little bitter and more resentful and your study habits get a little worse. So the next time you get like a D plus and then you collect a bunch of Fs and then you stop going to school and then you stop showering right? Then you end up jumping off the bridge. And so that's, a, that's, that's how the dragon eats you when you don't pay attention to it. And so it's no bloody wonder that people avoid, you know. It's really no wonder that they avoid because error messages contain within them the implicit world. Now the upside of that is, well, they contain within them the implicit world. And the world isn't all negative. The C- minus can be the best gift you ever had, and that's the gold that the dragon hoards, right? That's exactly what that means. Every time you try to learn something, you're going to make a mistake, because what do you know? So you're going to make mistakes. And if the rule is every time you make a mistake, you're going to go jump off the bridge, then that's not a useful problem-solving strategy. And so when you make a mistake, you don't get to beat yourself to death with a club. You've got a problem. Something has objected to you. Then the question is, well, what does that mean? Well, maybe you're not looking at the world right. Maybe your goals are wrong. Maybe you're not acting properly. It's okay. So the question that arises when an obstacle emerges is, which part of this structure needs attention? And the first answer can't be all of it, right? Because there's a piece that's broken somewhere. And then you might think, well, let's, let's assume it's a little piece to begin with. That's the right mechanism. Watch the people around you like a hawk. Whenever they do something that you think is good, you tell them, try to do something good and creep right back into their persona. And they'll look around, see if anyone noticed. And sometimes they'll get punished for it. And then, well, then they won't do it again. So don't do that. But then now and then you think, hey, I saw you do this. It was actually, that was actually pretty good. I know you don't want to because 
You really want to dominate them. And you don't, you don't want them thriving because then they'd be, a, they'd be competition to you and you wouldn't be able to go complain to your mother about what a miserable partner you have. And you know how delightful that is. So you'd have to forego all that pleasure if you actually helped your person develop. So you got to get over all that. It's really annoying. Uh, it's dangerous because they might outshine you. Well, good. Then you have someone to compare yourself to. That'd be a good deal. It's really rough with kids, you know, because parents will stop their children from succeeding beyond them. They get jealous. And then they'll put them down. And then they have kids that do not like them. And they'll pay for it. If, if you aren't suffering from self-imposed misery, and you're only suffering from inescapable misery, maybe you could handle that. And, you know, you could, you could survive. You could bear it. And, and even maybe without becoming irredeemably corrupt. And so the goal would be, well, yeah, life is a rat's nest of miseries and maybe it has no ultimate meaning. We could say that if we're feeling particularly pessimistic, but it still leaves one question open, which is if you didn't do everything you could to make it worse, how good could you make it be? And the, the least answer is, well, it, it could be tragedy, but maybe not hell. That's the most pessimistic proper statement. The worst case outcome, in the worst of all possible worlds, is that your life could be tragic, but not hell. You're at your mother's deathbed and all you, you and all your idiot siblings are arguing. Well, that's the difference between tragedy and hell. You walk away from a situation like that, sick of yourself and sick of everything else too. And you know, it's often the case that tragic circumstances bring out the dragons because the stress is high and all those things that people haven't dealt with, they don't have the energy to repress. And, and all the bitterness comes pouring forward. If you were all gathered around the bed of someone close who was dying, could you manage it? And if the answer is no, it's like, well, put your life together because it's gonna happen. And you should be the person who's there that can do it and do it properly. And then maybe you'd find that it isn't the sort of thing that will undermine your faith in life itself. You don't wanna be the thing that clings so desperately to the raft that you can't let go when someone comes to rescue you, right? You don't want to be that. So then you think, well, exactly what are you? You're not the chaos, you're not the plan. Maybe you're the thing that confronts the obstacle. And then when you know even further that the obstacle is not only an obstacle, but opportunity itself. Are you so sure that this is a problem? Is that the only way that you can look at it? Or is it an opportunity? And maybe you're in the order and maybe you're in the chaos, but those can flip on you. And maybe you shouldn't be in either of those places. Maybe you should be right in the middle. That's when you go down, you see, when you're down in chaos and you don't know what the hell's going on, you have to rediscover the values that orient people, have oriented people forever. That's what you have to discover. So for example, when I'm dealing with people who have post-traumatic stress disorder, and they've usually encountered someone malevolent, they have to relearn the description of good and evil. Because if they don't, they have no framework. They're lost. They think, well, there's malevolence afoot in the world because the only thing that a monster won't mess with is another monster. And you might say, well, I don't want to transform myself into a monster. It's like, you don't have a choice. You can either be a pathetic monster or you can be a monster with some power. Those are your options. There's no non-monster alternative, weak or strong. And I don't mean strong like dominating tyrant strength. That isn't what I mean at all. I mean strength like functioning at a funeral strength and that's a kind of monstrosity and when you're down in chaos that's what you have to rediscover you want to be safe forget that that's not in the cards you're not going to be safe well then you have to be meta safe and that's way better because then you're not safe but you know how to cope with danger well fine <laughs> that solves the problem and maybe it's even a better solution because if you're safe then you just have to stay in your burrow but if you can confront danger, then you can go wherever you want and you can have an adventure. And maybe that's what you need to do is to go out and have an adventure. So you don't even want safety because how exciting is that? Let's say we made you perfectly safe. All that you had to do is eat cakes and worry yourself with the continuation of the species. What would you do? You'd smash it all down as soon as you possibly could, just so you had something interesting and challenging to do. So you don't want safety. You want to be able to cope with danger. That's a whole different thing. You don't get to be safe ever again. Well, so what happens? You get to be stronger. Well, hey, it turns out that's a better bargain anyways.